Right, good evening everybody. My name is Adrian Parry-Jones and I'm a Stroke Association Margaret Giffen Reader at the University of Manchester and it's a pleasure to speak to you tonight about our work to improve outcomes from hemorrhagic stroke. So stroke has two main causes. There's ischemic strokes where a blood clot blocks an artery leading to loss of blood supply to part of the brain and hemorrhagic stroke where a blood vessel bursts causing bleeding into the brain. Now, hemorrhagic stroke is uh, less common than ischemic stroke, but it still causes 10,000 uh, strokes per year in the UK. And importantly, patients who have an intracerebral hemorrhage or a hemorrhagic stroke are at risk of having worse outcomes than patients with ischemic stroke. So to give you an idea of that, let's consider 10 patients presenting to hospital with a stroke. Now, you don't know whether it's a hemorrhagic or an ischemic stroke until you do a scan of the brain. And when we do that, we usually find that about one in 10 are caused by an intracerebral hemorrhage. And then if we take those patients with intracerebral hemorrhage and look at 10 of them, we know that overall, unfortunately, three out of 10 don't survive their hospital admission and uh, don't get through to discharge, which is much higher than what we see in ischemic stroke. And of those that survive, we know that about five are discharged with moderate to severe disability, meaning that they'd be dependent on others for day-to-day -day care in the longer term. So that leaves only two out of those 10 patients who get admitted who um, make a recovery with either only mild or no disability, allowing them to return to independent living. So combined with the fact that uh, hemorrhagic stroke has much poorer outcomes um, and combined with some experience that I had early on in training in stroke, I chose to uh, dedicate my research and clinical career towards improving outcomes for this type of stroke. So when I first started training in stroke in the mid 2000s, it was an exciting time for stroke. The uh, stroke services were being centralized in Greater Manchester where I worked as well as in London. And a lot of that was around delivering urgent treatments to patients with ischemic stroke. And one of those key treatments is thrombolysis, which is a clot busting drug to remove the clot from the brain and improve outcome. And obviously that would make things worse for hemorrhagic stroke. So it's very important that you do a brain scan before um, you treat a patient with this. So what I experienced very early on was the urgency and um, uh, the team working in tandem together to deliver this important treatment for ischemic stroke patients. And one of the first things we would do is get the patient through to the CT scanner as quickly as possible so that we could get on and give the treatment. But unfortunately, in one in every 10 cases, the CT scan looks like this. So this is an intracerebral hemorrhage on a CT brain scan and the, the blood is the big white area that you can see on the scan. And what I experienced then was that the urgency would drop out of the situation and that was largely because there was very little that we could offer to these patients compared to ischemic stroke. And that combined with the poor outcomes um, made me believe that there was a lot we could do to improve the situation for this group of patients. So in 2013, a trial was published called the Interact 2 trial, which showed that intensive blood pressure lowering for this group of patients might reduce the risk of the hematoma getting bigger, the blood clot getting bigger, and might improve how patients recover and their quality of life in the longer term. So we thought if we put this together with all of the other treatments that we knew worked for this group of patients, could we improve their outcomes? So from that was born our project, which was the ABC ICH project. And as part of that, we developed a care bundle, which brought all of these things together and reminded clinicians of the, uh, the, the interventions that could be delivered to help. So the A stood for anticoagulant reversal, which is um, reversal of blood thinning drugs, which a proportion of patients are taking when they come in. And we know that if we do that really quickly, it can reduce the chance of the hematoma getting bigger. The blood pressure lowering was as described um, to an intervention to intensively lower blood pressure and reduce the risk of further bleeding. And the C is for a care pathway, which is about referring the right patients to neurosurgery promptly. So during that project, we um, tried to improve care over the course of a year and we looked at how we did. So um, as I mentioned on an earlier slide, we know that around three out of every 10 patients don't survive their hospital admission. And that was very much the case at Salford where I worked beforehand. But what we found during the year of delivering the project and thereafter was that one of the, out of those three deaths was um, prevented. So we had managed to reduce deaths by about a third and that translated to around two to three lives saved per month at our hospital in Salford.
So how did we do this? Well, we used uh, an approach called quality improvement, which is widely used across the NHS and across lots of other industries. And one of the cornerstones of quality improvement is having good, quick data. And you need that data to know how well your service is performing and also to test changes out. So if you change processes to improve care, you need to know whether they're helping. And uh, that's why you need quick access to data. So here's an example of how we put this into practice for blood pressure lowering. So this is a chart that shows you the needle to target time for blood pressure lowering. So that's the time from giving the first injection of a drug to lowering blood pressure to actually achieving the target that we wanted. And our target was 60 minutes to try and do this. And the blood pressure had to go below 140 millimeters of mercury. So you can see that um, each dot on this chart represents a patient and the trial that showed that this treatment worked had been published before the start of this chart. So despite that, um, the treatment was, was prolonged. It was taking much more than the 60 minutes that, um, that it should take to deliver. So we introduced a protocol with a quick reference guide for clinicians to use when they were delivering care. And we put that in place here and we looked at the data for the next six patients. And we found that things hadn't really improved. And when we looked into why, it seemed to be that the first line drug that we were using had to be given as an injection every five minutes by the doctor. And obviously the doctor was very busy admitting um, other patients who were arriving in the hospital. So it wasn't often possible for them to stand there and give her the drug every five minutes for up to an hour. So we then switched to using a different drug called GTN, which could be given as an infusion by the nursing team to a standard protocol and the dose could be gradually escalated until the blood pressure was controlled. So we put that in place, making it then a nurse-led process, and that was very successful. So most of the time, blood pressure was being hit in at or near the target of 60 minutes. But there were a few cases where that wasn't the case. And when we looked into it, it seemed to be that patients were getting transferred to the ward and the increases of the infusion stopped happening, which meant that blood pressure took a long time to come under control. So following that, we put in place another protocol to say that patients should stay in the emergency department for the first 60 minutes of treatment. And if the target isn't achieved um, during that time, that they'd be transferred to the critical care unit for further care so that the blood pressure could be managed further. And that was very successful. So for most cases, we were then achieving the target. So here's an example of how by using rapidly collected data, making quick changes to improve care, we've been able to deliver consistent effective care to every patient for blood pressure lowering. And we did this across the whole care bundle, including anticoagulant reversal and the care pathway. But there were still a few problems with this. So the first was that it was quite time consuming to collect all of this data. So it meant that um, for every case, someone would have to go into the records, um, look at the often scanned in electronic um, documents, uh, look through written text within the records to extract the times that we were interested in. So it took time to collect data. And also when we were changing the protocol, um, the quick reference guide had to be changed and it was difficult to keep that up to date and make sure that older versions weren't being um, used for care. So to try and solve those two problems, we developed the ABC ICH app. So this has uh, three parts within it for each part of the bundle. Um, it's intended to be used by clinicians um, at the point that they're caring the patient and uh, caring for the patients, and it can be used on any device. So it can be used on a smartphone, on a tablet, or on a desktop computer. So this is the anticoagulant reversal screen. So the first screen shows pictures of anticoagulant tablets to remind um, families and patients what the tablets look like so they can check whether they're being taken. It calculates doses of reversal agents, and then it captures the time at which the, the reversal agent was given. So we know that data um, from within the app. For the blood pressure lowering part, it recommends a treatment target and threshold. Um, it collects all of the data in real time as the patient's being treated and displays that back to the clinician in the chart. It lets them know when the target's been reached and reminds them of the monitoring um, protocol thereafter. And then the final care pathway part um, uh, reproduces the neurosurgical referral criteria, criteria, helps the clinician calculate the volume of the hemorrhage, which is important in those criteria. And then it captures when and if the referral was made to neurosurgery. So that data is also available. So all of this data is being collected in a database in the background and is automatically displayed, displayed back to the clinical team so they can continually monitor their data without any additional effort. And this allows them to focus on improving care 
without um, having to spend time collecting data. So for the next stages of our work, we're planning to scale the ABC ICH project up across the north of England. And we've organized uh, regions into what we call clusters, where the neurosurgical unit and all of the stroke units that refer into it um, work together as a team to improve care and meet regularly to review their um, progress and learning. And that we hope by doing this project, we'll be able to better understand whether the effects that we've seen in Salford are reproduced across a much wider part of the NHS, to look at whether um, the disability profile of those that do survive is improving and also to look at the cost effectiveness of the care bundle. So I'd just like to finish by thanking uh, all of these organisations who've provided funding and support for this work so far, all of the clinicians who've contributed greatly to this project in Greater Manchester and also to the Stroke Association and their supporters for helping to make this work possible. So thank you very much for your time.